one way we mark the passing decades is by who the hot disc jockey of the time was. That's right. For me, in the 60s, it was Murray the K. In the 70s, it was Wolfman Jack. <laughs> Very good. And it's beginning to look like the 80s are going to be known as the age of Dr. Demento. He's the man, you know, sure. He's the man who popularized such records as the Psycho Chicken, Pencil Neck Geek, <laughs> and the Cockroach that ate Cincinnati. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of music. I wonder if he played my favorite song, I'll Love You Eight Nights a Week. Oh, I Love You Eight Nights a Week? Is that a record? Well, it's not a record, John, but it's a darn good average. Right, Chuck? <laughs> right. Anyway, I went to visit the legendary Dr. Demento. Oh! All right, Dimensions and Dementites, what time is it? It's funny time time! People from all over the country have been asking us to do a story on this man, their favorite disc jockey, who broadcasts his lunacies across the radio waves of America each week. Well, I listened to his show on the radio, too. And now I was going to get to meet and interview the infamous funny music man of the airwaves, Dr. Demento. Hey, come on in. You're just in time. Hi. 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 I arrived at the studio at the prearranged time, but instead of getting an interview, Dr. Demento gave me a hat and an accordion. He said he couldn't talk just now because he had a show to do. Here we go. Shh. Quiet on the set. Here we go. The doctor is in. We got a phone call for number four. My name's Ron Bailey. And now on the Dr. Demento Show. Just when I thought the crazy records were over and we get a chance to talk, a fellow named Weird Al Yankovic showed up at the studio and Dr. Demento put him on the air live. The doctor told me he puts lots of weird people on the show, which made me feel like I fit right in. maybe Weird Al would talk with me for a minute, but he said he couldn't. He had a performance to do. Well, I figured if you can't beat him, join him. So I joined in with the Dementites, a loyal group of young people who helped the good doctor put on his show. It was getting late, and there wouldn't be time to interview Demento that day and to really get to know the true man underneath his demented exterior. So the next day, I set out again, this time to Dr. Demento's house to finally get that interview. However, when I arrived, the doctor was rushing to a special swap meet where he gets most of the old and rare records which he has collected since he was a kid. When we got to the swap meet, he was only interested in talking to the other record buffs, so I just tagged along. Hey, thank you very much. I sure appreciate that. Next, I followed Demento to a record club where I thought he might finally give me a glimpse into the real man. But all he talked about was music. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to talk a little bit about the continuing dance mania of America. His lecture was fascinating, but I couldn't help hoping that Demento would hurry up because I still hadn't gotten my interview. When we finally did reach his house again, the doctor picked up his fan mail and we went inside to sit and talk. Once inside, I couldn't help but notice there was no place to sit and talk. Dr. Demento's entire house was filled with records. So rather than have an interview, the doctor offered to show me his record collection, which he estimated to be about 150,000. But first, he put on a little mood music for the tour. We started in the den. Moved into his office. The doctor is out. Next, took a tour of the kitchen. Despite what people may think, I play no dirty records on my show. Then we continued into the living room. But my heart will be obedient. There were records everywhere, so I joked to the good doctor. Surely he didn't have any records in the... Wait, wait. The garage! The garage! Well, after the tour was complete, we cleared away some records in the den and finally sat down for the interview. 
Tell me, what is the most important thing in your life? Records! 150,000 and I want more! Send me your records! No, 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 no. Besides records, what are your interests? I this mean... is a song called Shaving Cream, and this is certainly one of the most famous songs in the history of the Dr. Demento show. What about your childhood? And well, your... the first record that was my very own was uh, Lavender Blue Dilly Dilly, <laughs> sung by Burl Ott. When RCA first introduced 45 in 1949, they made seven different colors. Well, I'm sorry, folks. I never did get that deep interview with the weird and wonderful Dr. Demento. But one thing I did find out about the man, his whole life is music. They're coming to take me away, ha-ha. They're coming to take me away. Ha-ha, <laughs> <laughs> to the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats and they're coming to 